the deadly experiment. A freak accident. A secret that will be carried to the grave as the horror classic is reborn. Return of the Living Dead, Part 2. Jesse will be the first to know. Billy will be the first to go. We've got to get out of here. Get to a phone. Seven of the Living against an army of the dead starved for life. was safe to be dead. Hey YouTubers, Hankster here and welcome to part two of our 30th anniversary uh, Return to Living Dead review special. Um, this is basically, uh, if you missed the first video, which I hope you didn't, uh, this is basically a series of videos uh, dedicated to the Return of the Living Dead movie series, uh, being that the first movie celebrates its 30th anniversary this year. And of course, being it's Halloween, obviously it would be a good time to do it. And now we're going into uh, our second uh, movie to review, and of course that is Return of the Living Dead Part 2. Uh, featuring return actors such as uh, James Karen, Tom Matthews, uh, Brian Peck, and Alan Trotman, and including even uh, the actor who play originally played Colonel Glover in the first movie. Um, obviously, this is a somewhat of a continuation of the first movie, even though no mention of the events of the first movie was meant, uh, um, placed in this movie. Um, obviously. And um, unlike the first movie, which was a horror movie with elements of comedy in it, this time it was a comedy with, hor with horror melted into it um, as well. Because there are obviously some gory scenes and some scary scenes in there, so obviously, with, you know, with being with zombies and everything. But um, more, more or less, this is more of a comedy. The zombies are more um, goofy this time rather than scary. Um, mostly through the talents of Brian Peck. If you remember, Brian Peck in the first movie took on the role of uh, Scuzz, one of the uh, punks in the movie, who, of course, uh, got killed off near the uh, climax of the picture. Well, this time around, he decided to come back um, as, within a group of, uh, of uh, actors uh, playing... Um, um, a sort of arrangement. Oh, there was there was many zombies in the movie, but there was a group of that played um, zombies in the movie that uh, got you know uh, most of the film time. Film time. <laughs> um, as I said, also uh, James Karen, Tom Matthews are back now. Of course, them. Um, if you haven't seen this movie, they are not reprising the roles from the first movie. They're not playing Freddy or Frank. Obviously, they Freddy. Uh, uh, yeah, um, Frank throws himself into a, into a uh, uh, crematorium, and of course, obviously, Freddy probably got himself nuked at the end of the first movie. This time around, they play new characters, played Ed and Joey, a couple of bumbling uh, um, grave robbers who wind up getting themselves contaminated by the gas, even though they this time around, they weren't the ones fucking around with the tanks. Um... As I said, the uh, original actor who played Colonel Glover is also in this movie. Of course, um, um, not as much at film time as he did in the first movie, but um, it, says it was interesting to note that he is in this. And also, Alan Trotman has returned. Of course, he is once again playing the Tar Man, which I like to call Tar Man 2.0, being that this, is, this version of the Tar Man looks different than the first one. 
So basically there was a lot of returns. Now, of course, there was an actress you might recognize from another movie. She, of course, uh, the girl who played Brenda, uh, Joey's girlfriend in this movie. Um, she uh, could be seen in another popular movie around this time period, uh, Weird Science. Uh, she was one of the two girls that was originally dating the two guys, uh, with one of them played by Robert Downey Jr., a.k.a. Iron Man. And, of course, later would go with one of the lead guys in that movie, the nerdy guys. <laughs> um, obviously, there's some, of course, a lot of uh, par- you know, a lot of uh, parallels to the to the first movie. Of course, um, the gas leaks and goes into the atmosphere and contaminates the clouds, and it rains and brings the zombies and everything, um, and all. Um, but. You know, um, and of course the uh, Tom Matthews and James Cameron slowly turn the zombies again, and uh, and all, obviously. Um, but there's some a lot of interesting differences. Um, act, you know, more younger people, younger actors, like even little kids are in this movie. And um, of course, Williams, the lead character uh, Jesse, um, as well. Um, well, even though it is, you know, not as good as the first one, obviously, but it, it, it is good on its own, uh, as a, as a movie, it doesn't totally stink or anything, um, most of the jokes are pretty funny, even at the very end, if you saw the, um, that, um, Michael Jackson thriller rip, that was obviously done by Brian Peck, was, it was kind of funny, um, <laughs> the um, but of course it was just you know the director trying to re- you know to do what they did in the original movie but because you know since he didn't do it right he, you know tried he thought it would maybe it was a comedy done with horror stuff it obviously was a horror obviously the first movie was a horror done with comedy bits in there so go figure but um as I said, it was good. You know, the special effects were pretty good. Um, makeup jobs were pretty good. Even there was like some interesting puppetry, as well. Um, obviously, here's one thing: if you get the DVD version, there is a lot of takeaways. Um, the music when the zombies are, are reanimating, coming out of the graves, and everything. This there's a redone version of the original Troxon music from the first movie. It was redone. It was, it was pretty good too, but they redid it. They took that music out and put some other music in there, which was, which was pretty lame. Um, at all. I don't know why they, they took it out. I don't know if it had anything to do with copyright issues or something like that. I don't know. But um, that's an interesting note to put in. And also, Monster Mash was originally used for the movie other than the um, end credits, but um, they decided to take that out as well. Maybe because of copyright problems, but by the time the, it was being released on DVD, I don't know. But uh, all in all, as I said, it was a pretty good movie. A lot of good elements, um, a lot of memorable scenes. Um, if you people are hung up on uh, the bully situation in the real world, there's a bully situation in this movie you can get yourselves into <laughs> at all. And uh, but I'm not gonna give too much away. Um, that's but as I said, it is a parallel to the first movie in some aspects, and a lot of original stuff thrown in there as well. And, uh, of course, I hope you enjoyed this little review of Return of the Living Dead Part 2. And, of course, we're going to be moving away from the horror comedy or comedy horror. Uh, the first one's moving into a more different look of Return of the Living Dead with um, sort of a romantic element thrown in there. And uh, Part 3 we'll be going into and with, with the th- third movie of the series. And, uh, of course, uh, stay tuned here for more reviews and whatnot here on the Multiverse. See ya.